Australians aren't eating enough fish. As a nation, we consume about 40% less seafood than recommended for a healthy diet. The reasons for this are partly due to cost, but also perhaps a reluctance to eat farmed fish from Asia. Seafood importers have now launched a campaign to correct what they believe are misconceptions about Asian aquaculture. Every weekday about 50 tonnes of mostly Australian seafood is traded at the Sydney fish markets. Only Japan has a bigger marketplace. But the reality is that most of the fish and shellfish eaten by Australians wasn't caught or farmed here and won't be sold at places like this. It's more likely to arrive by refrigerated container to cold storage owned by about 50 major seafood importers. This load is from New Zealand, but it could have come from anywhere. The majority of our seafood is coming out of Southeast Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, also from South Africa, Norway, South America, the US, Poland, Spain, the UK, it can, and New Zealand, of course, New Zealand being, being one of the largest suppliers to our market. And that's no bad thing, according to veteran importer Harry Peters. He says imports are more affordable at a time when budgets are stretched and Australians are eating 40% less seafood than recommended by the National Health and Medical Research Council. I'm extremely concerned that we're not eating enough seafood, particularly our children and we need to educate families to get seafood back on the diet. And if mum's just careful with the shopping, she can pick up some pretty good product at pretty good prices. But even if it was more affordable, Australia cannot supply its own seafood needs. Local wild caught and farmed fish accounts for just a quarter of national consumption. And Australia now imports about 210,000 tonnes a year. The vast majority of seafood overall comes from Southeast Asia. What sort of product? Um, shrimp is the number one species consumed in Australia still, but um, we eat a lot of um, baza, which is the uh, Mekong catfish uh, from Vietnam predominantly, and uh, we eat a lot of barramundi. Um, a lot of people don't realise that barramundi is prolific throughout Southeast Asia, and uh, it's, it's, it's growing in popularity as one of the main species eaten in Australia. Norm Grant says cheaper doesn't mean poorer quality. But unfortunately, according to the Executive Chairman of the Australian Seafood Importers Association, there's still market resistance in Australia to seafood farmed in places like Thailand and Vietnam, even though they've become global seafood producers. There's been a concerted campaign in some quarters to destroy the reputation of the imported seafood. That partly comes from competitive interests, that is people supplying other species into this market, a little bit from local producers who fear competition from imports. And I think too some people just get the wrong idea. They visit countries like Vietnam as tourists, they see the small cage operations um, owned by family interests uh, that are not built to any standard at all and assume that must be the export um, industry. And of course plenty of people saying, well that's where your fish comes from, but of course that's not the case. So we went to Vietnam to ask the experts who actually work there. The Seafood Importers Association is trying to educate Australians about sustainable aquaculture in places like Vietnam, where companies are often vertically integrated, controlling breeding, feeding, processing and cold chain distribution. Pangasius, more commonly known as Bassa, is now the second most consumed fish in Australia after Tasmanian Atlantic salmon. 20 years ago, it was a staple for the poor throughout the Mekong Delta. Now Vietnam sells bassa to more than 130 countries. But after we can uh, do the hatchery of Pangasus, the farming of Pangasus in 10 years increased very fast from uh, uh, 10,000 ton a year to uh, one and one, uh, one million four hundred thousand ton a year and export is start from 60 million US dollar per year 
to come to uh, last year 1.8 billion of dollar per year. At last year's Viet Fish Expo in Hanoi, there were buyers from around the world. Vietnam now produces seafood worth close to $4 billion. Australia accounts for just 2.8% of sales. I would say that products from Vietnam, the ones that are from reputable companies, are without doubt among the best you'll find anywhere. Jeff Peterson is the Director of Quality Control for the Global Aquaculture Alliance. It's one of the world's biggest sustainability certifiers. He says Vietnamese companies have been keen to adapt best practice standards to satisfy markets in America and Europe where sustainability is a key demand. Because sustainability to some people means environmental responsibility so that you don't damage the environment where you work. We have strict metrics on effluent uh, water quality, for example. That may satisfy some people, but in others, sustainability means proper treatment of workers, that they're paid fairly, that they're given the proper training, and so on and so forth. To other people, food safety is all about making sure the product is consistently, not only wholesome and nutritious, but safe. No antibiotics, no hormones, no additives of any kind. Vietnam is aiming to have all of its seafood exports third-party certified by 2015. Companies like Australis Barramundi, which moved to Vietnam five years ago, are now aggressively marketing their sustainability credentials. Uh, we have 150 hectares at this site, uh, 750 metres wide and two kilometres long. So right now we're only harvesting on about 10% of the water that's available to us and we can produce over 2,000 tonnes per year from, from this site. The one-time Australian company is aiming to produce about 6,000 tonnes by next year. Its main market is the United States, but it's now also selling to Australian supermarket chains. Obviously we have discerned the difference between performance and sustainability. And not only do we want to be a high-performing company, but we have to be here for a long time. And in order to do that well, we have to take care of our environment, obviously. And so part of what we do is to minimize the waste. You know, we have cameras at eight meters below the surface so that when we feed, we can see clearly when the fish have had enough food and they get a stop signal. And so we can minimize the, the feed wastage that goes into the environment. On top of that, we have a fallowing system that basically allows us to use only you know, about 30% of the water that, that Australis has here in our operation is used for farming at any one time. The rest of the water is used for fallowing and for resting oh, those areas. Yeah, it's great. Well, let's have a taste. Okay, let's have a taste, yeah. Have a look at it. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, look at the fat layer through there. You don't have to there. cut it too thin, I don't believe. I think yeah. you still have a bit of meat on it. Mmm. Australian seafood consultant John Sussman has been working with cobia farmers in Vietnam and has been introducing their product to some of Australia's best restaurants. I think it's a fantastic fish. I, I, I honestly, you know, this perception of, you know, Vietnam and getting fish, it's all crap. Look, it's, this is just blowing it out of the water for me. Uh, it's a consistent fish daily for me. I look, I run a 220 seat restaurant. Yeah. I'm going through 10 to 15 kilos of fish a day of one yeah. pipe. Yeah. You know, it's consistent. It comes like this every time. Mm. You know, obviously the size has changed a little bit, you're saying now. Do you, do you stay at this restaurant? There are opportunities, and I think that being able to come to the top end of the market, this is where the opinion leaders and opinion formers are. Uh, people are looking to the likes of Joe and the guys working in the three star restaurants to actually tell them what are the next trends. And if these guys are using quality products, then it sort of, it really augurs well for broader markets. Fantastic. So now it's just a taste test, I guess. All right, let's have a look. So beautifully cooked. Oh, just look at that. Slightly under. Yeah, that's perfect, isn't you know it? I mean? Beautiful, look at that. That's gorgeous. Slightly under. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Just warming through now. All right, there you go. All right, here we go. John Sussman says there are big opportunities for Australians to help develop mm. aquaculture in Asia. Wow, that's clean, isn't it? I actually think that that's probably one of the big futures for our aquaculture industry is not necessarily uh, growing product, but providing intellectual property through the chain, both from a production 
post-harvest and marketing perspective. You know, we, we definitely have uh, the skills here in Australia to be able to provide to uh, farmers throughout Asia to bring products into the Western markets. While most of the fish brought into Australia is by big players such as Harry Peters, the Seafood Importers Association says the growth of aquaculture in Asia has seen a growth in part-time operators importing product. The association is calling for a licensing system. If you want to become a bricklayer or a builder or an electrician or a plumber or a real estate agent, you have to be licensed. Yet in our industry, anybody can import a container of prawns or a container of fish without any licence and, and nine times out of ten the backyarders have no idea of the health controls required. And this is something that as an industry we need to police very quickly. Yes, we think the rules ought to be tightened for importers. Um, to be an importer you need a lot of experience. And there are a lot of rules in terms of the food safety re requirements we have to meet and also the quarantine requirements. And uh, whilst most of the large companies can comply with that easily, we see an increasing number of new entrants into that market, particularly for small family businesses that may have relations overseas. And we really are concerned that those people may not be completely um, knowledgeable about the rules. And while the government has no immediate plans for licensing importers, it says all seafood imports are subject to a range of tests at approved laboratories like this one. It's part of a two-tiered surveillance system managed by the Department of Agriculture. Health specialists tell us to look at high-risk foods, which we do 100% of the time, and then there are other foods which we call surveillance foods, where we generally check them to see whether or not they contain anything that's harmful to human health. We test for a range of uh, different contaminants that are present in seafood. And it could be uh, marine biotoxins or antibiotics, or anything that, that can uh, poison people in the food chain, including, of course, uh, microbiological contamination. Uh, that's things like sewage contamination. That's right, E. coli, uh, salmonella, uh, and the, the same sort of things that you find in, uh, in fast food shops. The Department of Agriculture says better than 99% of imports are deemed safe. Seafood importers say the public should have faith in their products because they're tested more than Australian seafood.